Right now on 12 at 12, what we're learning about a deadly officer involved shooting in Phoenix. Plus new details on Arizona's plan to distribute a COVID-19 vaccine. And the mystery in the mountains, a third metal monolith is found, this time in California. Where are they coming from? 12 at 12 starts right now. 12 minutes, no commercials. We're on TV and on the go on the 12 News app, Facebook and YouTube. Hey guys, it's Tram here. Our big story right now, taking a look at the latest numbers on the coronavirus here in Arizona. The Department of Health says the state has added more than 5,400 new cases of the virus and a shocking 82 more deaths. Hospitals are also at record capacity with only about 10% of beds available statewide and ventilator usage is at its highest point since the middle of the summer. That brings us to today's talker. With cases surging across the state, we're asking you this. Is Arizona doing enough to slow the spread of COVID-19? 14% of you say yes, 86% of you though say no. Catch your vote right now at 12news.com slash bullhorn or feel free to comment down below if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube. The results just minutes away. Governor Ducey held a news conference yesterday to address the COVID-19 pandemic and issued a handful of new executive orders but stopped short of a curfew, stay at home order or shutting down any currently open businesses. But the governor did provide new details on the plan for distributing a COVID-19 vaccine in Arizona. Team 12's Trisha Hendricks joins us to break down how that may work. Governor Doug Ducey says the first shipment of COVID-19 vaccines could reach Arizona as soon as December 15th and that all Arizonans will have access to the vaccines free of charge. Later this week, the Department of Health Services plans to roll out a full vaccine plan, but leaders are already saying healthcare workers, vulnerable populations, and Native American communities will get it first. Also announcing yesterday, teachers will be among those next in line. I'm issuing an executive order in cooperation with our insurers and our health care providers that ensures every Arizonan can get a vaccine free of charge. The governor also extending support for restaurants yesterday, making it easier for them to expand outdoor seating. He's also giving more than a million dollars to the restaurant industry to give them that economic boost they all need during this, of course, difficult time for so many businesses. Governor Ducey also announced an additional $60 million and that will go to help provide more staffing at hospitals. For now, we're at the state capitol. Trisha Hendricks, 12 News. Trisha, thank you. Meanwhile, two Valley Hospital groups, Banner and Valley Wise, are sharing updates on how they're handling COVID-19. Team 12's Jen Wall joins us from Gilbert with more on what doctors are saying that we can expect in the coming weeks. Yeah, both Banner and Valley Wise health groups have been getting ready for a very bad winter, and they say now that Thanksgiving is behind us, they're starting to see it. Banner Health has seen a 90% increase in COVID patients in Phoenix in November. Half of all ICU patients in the Valley are COVID patients. Valley Wise Health is still sitting at 90% capacity in their ICU. Both hospitals say they're heading toward maximum capacity and beyond. Banner Health says they're looking for staff any where they can and Valley Wise Health tells us it's going after traveling nurses and any other medical staff they can find. But hospitals everywhere are coming up short. We continue to be able to attract some folks that are able to come to Arizona and help us, not to the volume that we would, you know, like to have. Both Banner and Valley Wise say they're holding on for now, but predict full capacity by next week. The governor declining to enact the aggressive mitigation efforts many health experts requested. Instead, he's giving an additional $60 million to provide more staffing at hospitals. And leaders for both hospitals said the next two months will be worse. They're estimating the peak of this winter surge will come about the week before Christmas and then another possible in January. And then both hospitals said they support a statewide curfew to help slow the spread of COVID-19. Governor Ducey has not ordered a curfew at this time. For now, we're in Gilbert, Jen Wall, 12 News. Jen, thank you. Hashtag most clicked. Here are the stories piquing everyone's interest right now. Two people are dead and a canine officer is injured after an officer involved shooting incident in Phoenix this morning. Police tell us officers involved, excuse me, responded to the area of 19th Avenue in Dunlap and found one man dead at the scene. Officers were led to a nearby apartment, which they entered along with a canine unit. A man inside opened fire, hitting the canine. The man then left the apartment, pointed his gun at officers who shot and killed him. 
The canine is expected to recover. The investigation remains ongoing at this hour. Arizona's newest senator, Democrat Mark Kelly, was formally sworn in Wednesday, marking the first time Arizona has two Democratic U.S. senators in more than 50 years. This morning on Today in AZ, Mark Kelly spoke to 12 News for an exclusive interview. We asked him what are his top priorities as he begins his Senate career representing Arizonans. Here's what he had to say. Well, the first thing is the public health crisis. We've got to get the infection rate under control. Uh, hospitalizations if, uh, are, are starting to get to numbers that we saw back in July. And if uh, we don't you know, flatten the curve on the infection rate, we're going to have a, a, a challenging January and February. And then we have to do something about the, the needed relief that families need. Uh, Gabby and I were at uh, the Tucson Food Bank about a week and a half ago. And they see 2,500 cars in a day. Those are unprecedented numbers. Families are really struggling and they need assistance from the government. You can watch the full interview on our website, 12news.com, or our free 12 News app. Well, what is it? How did it get there? That's what people are asking about a metal obelisk that mysteriously appeared in a California park. The metal monolith is on a hiking trail in San Luis Obispo. It's similar to other obelisks that have been spotted around the world recently, including one in a remote part of Utah and another in Romania. So far, there's no indication where any of them have come from. Well, keeping you safe now with an urgent alert from the Better Business Bureau about a new surge of fake puppy adoption websites in the U.S. and Canada. Victims have reported a median loss of 750 bucks. The BBB recommends seeing any pet in person before paying any money. You can do it by video call and scammers are unlikely to go along with it. And consider adopting from a local animal shelter. Well, now let's get to your forecast 411 as we look ahead to the first weekend of December. Crystal Henderson is here. Hey, Crystal. As we started winding up those winds yesterday, some Santas and Frosties ended up face down. So hopefully you were able to anchor down your holiday de decorations before hitting the hay last night because those winds even more fired up today and they might end up in your neighbor's yard with the winds whizzing in out of the north and east, gusting between 25 and 45 miles an hour. We'll see some of those max gusts topping out in our mountains, ridge tops, and in southeastern Arizona, where we have a wind advisory hanging on until 3 o'clock this afternoon. And after the winds cool their jets, that's what's going to allow temperatures to drop like a rock. And they are going to hit some of the lowest numbers of the season yet in our rural desert locations where we have freeze warnings in place. There's even a hard freeze warning right here holding on to San Carlos tonight as the mercury could slip into the upper 20s. It'll be a rude awakening in the valley as well as we chill things down into the 30s for many valley neighborhoods Friday and Saturday morning, which is the lowest temperatures since February. Many of those numbers coming up 5 to 10 degrees below average and near to below average temperatures are going to follow suit in the afternoons today and tomorrow. Winds will simmer down after today. Our skies will remain bright and temperatures will start warming up this weekend. Crystal, thank you. Time to check your money lines and the big business headlines of the day. UPS is placing shipping limits on some of its largest retailers, including Gap, Nike, and Macy's. That means those retailers will have to spread out their package volume to use other days, including the weekends, to lessen the load on UPS drivers. The restrictions take effect this week and are expected to run throughout the holiday season. The companies will let their customers know if the new limits will affect their deliveries. New jobless claims have hit the lowest level of the pandemic, but are still well above pre-pandemic numbers. In the last week, there were around 712,000 first-time unemployment claims. Meanwhile, filings for assistance from the emergency pandemic program continue to rise. The program was there to help people who have lost their normal benefits. In all, more than 20 million Americans are receiving some kind of financial assistance from the government. Carnival cancels more cruises through February. The battered cruise line issued an update this morning saying select cruises from Miami, Port Canaveral and Galveston, Texas were canceled in February. The company also announced it's delaying the inaugural sailing of the Mardi Gras until at least April. The new ship will become the first boat powered by liquefied natural gas in North America and will feature the first roller coaster at sea. 
DoorDash is rolling out a new system for restaurants who want to use their own delivery drivers. It's called DoorDash Self Delivery. The company says the system could increase a restaurant's visibility in their area while keeping them in control of the delivery process. DoorDash says a restaurant that uses that option will pay a reduced commission rate. Restaurants that sign up can set a delivery zone and their very own fees. Well, the coronavirus has some people canceling their plans for the upcoming Olympics. Tokyo 2020 announces roughly 18% of tickets for the event have been refunded. The organization says it plans to eventually resell those tickets. According to a press release, Tokyo 2020 is, quote, making every effort towards holding safe and secure games next year. The Olympics are scheduled to start on July 23rd of next year. Hey, let's get back to today's talker. With COVID-19 cases rising across the state, we're asking you this question. Is Arizona doing enough to slow the spread? A majority, 87% of you say no, 13% of you say yes. Keep voting on 12news.com slash bullhorn. And those of you watching on Facebook and YouTube, feel free to comment down below. And don't forget, for the next couple of weeks, we are sending the love to you with the help of our sponsors. And you can win all sorts of great prizes. All you have to do is go to 12news.com slash contest for all of the information to enter. Good luck, everyone. And that's your 12 at 12. The facts on everything you need to know in just 12 minutes, no commercials. We're always on anywhere, anytime on 12news.com, our free 12 News app, and our social media channels as well. We'll see you back here again soon for 12 News First at 4, where we'll also be talking about the new changes coming to Valley Sports and verifying will a flu vaccine cause a false positive for a COVID-19 test. We'll separate fact from fiction. Make it a wonderful day, everyone, and stay safe.